Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Elder Nathaniel, and on my right, Deacon Asa. Today's topic is your pastor. That's right, we're going to talk about your pastor in the pulpit. Let's open up with John 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, black woman, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is that you, children of the slave trade, make up the 12 tribes of Israel. And Christ came and died for you, and is returning to deliver you. Understand that. And for those of you who are contemplating, you're not sure yet, you're still going to church Sunday morning, today is your day where we're going to talk about your pastor in the pulpit. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. Here's the prophecy. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. And I will give you pastors, God says, according to mine heart. What does that mean? What is God's heart? Where do you find the mind, which is the heart of God, here in the Bible. Read it again. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I can remember growing up in these silly little churches. The pastor will give you one scripture, then a song and a dance. He will shuck and shuck and jive, cool all up in the pulpit, and you hear the organ playing and just madness. Go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Remember Jeremiah 3, 15? said, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Read this again. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. What is the knowledge? And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should what? Seek the law at his mouth. The knowledge of God is the law. Is the law. Is your pastor in the pulpit teaching you God's laws? Hmm? The answer is no. The answer is no. Did you finish that? And he should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So you're going to find out, and you're going to realize that we are the messengers of the Most High God. <clears throat> Our job is to feed you with knowledge and understanding of what? God's laws. From there, let's go to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, let's see what God says about your pastor in the pulpit. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Come on. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Who they feed? Feed themselves. They feed themselves, the Bible says. Come on. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Should not the shepherds feed the flock? They're supposed to feed the flock with what? Knowledge and understanding. Come on. You eat the fat and you clothe you with the wool. But you pastors, you lousy pastors, you what? Eat the fat and what? And clothe you with the wool. And clothe you with the What does that mean? They worried about their own food consumption. They worried about having the best clothes. That's what they worried about. Come on. You kill them that are fed. You kill those that are fed because when brothers and sisters are fed with the truth, fed with the law, and they may go to your lousy pastor, your pastor kills them in the spirit. No, brother, no, we don't deal with that. See, God loves everybody. That's what you do. That's what your lousy pastors do. Come on. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. But you don't feed the flock with knowledge and understanding. You don't feed the flock. From there, Micah chapter 3 and verse 11. What is your pastor in the pulpit worried about? What is his whole agenda? Huh? Mal Micah 3 and 11. Watch this. Micah chapter 3 verse 11. The heads thereof judge for reward. The heads thereof, meaning the leaders of the people, judge for what? For reward. Judge for reward, come on. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the priests thereof teach for what? For hire. I'm not going to your church unless you give me $15,000. I remember T.D. Jake came to Queens, New York. They, the church, he charged the church something like $40,000. And they said, and if you wanted to shake, because I was going to go, and I was going to give him a flyer. They said, if you want to shake T.D. Jake's hand, just shake the Negro's hand. $5,000. Wow. I 
God said, you all are crazy. You out of your mind. Read, let's read that again. The heads thereof judge for reward. Judge for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. And the prophets thereof divine for what? For money. For what? For money. Come on. Yet will they lean upon the Lord. Now watch this. Yet will these fake, lousy pastors in the pulpit lean on the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? Is not the Lord among us? See all the money I'm making? I teach for hire, I divine for money. Is not the Lord amongst us? For what do I have? I have three Bentleys. I got five homes and 12 houses. That's what your pastors do, is that it? None evil can come upon us. Then they say, because of all our wealth, none evil shall come upon us. That's what happens. That's what your pastor is all about. The almighty dollar. From there, let's go to, back to Malachi. Okay, chapter 2, verse 7. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Now watch this. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Because your lousy pastor that says the laws of God is done away with, there's only one law that dumb, lousy pastor will keep. The law on tithes. And let's get some understanding on tithes. Read it again. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Number one, Negro, you don't understand what God's storehouse is. And we're going to explain it as we go on. Come on. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouses, that there may be meat in mine house. That there may what? That there may be meat in mine that house. That there may be meat in God's house. Now remember, get your pens, your paper and pens. Bibles, pens, and paper. Bible, pens, and paper. Take notes, okay? Read it again. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouses, that there may be meat in mine house. Why does there need to be meat in God's house? We're going to find out. Go ahead. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. God says, if you bring meat into my house, I will open the windows of heaven. Come on. And pour out a blessing that there shall be room enough to receive it. Come on. And I will rebuke the devourer. Now here's the key on tithes. Well, listen good. God says, if you bring meat into the storehouse, okay, he says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you so that you will not be so much as able to receive it. He says, and I will what? And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. The, devour, the, the devourer is something that devours. We're going to find what all this is talking about. Go ahead. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. And he, which is a devourer, shall not destroy the fruit. Did it say fruits? The fruits of your ground. The fruits of your ground. Was that it, verse 11? Neither shall your vine cast her fruits before the time in Neither the Neither shall your vine cast their fruit before their time. Come on. Saith the Lord of hosts. That was verse 11. Yeah. Now, so it sounds like the devourer is going to destroy crops. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Before we give you the answer to that, let's go to the law. Deuteronomy 14, verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bring forth year by year. Wait, wait, read that again. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bring forth year by year. That's why the Lord said in Malachi, he would, if you bring me into the storehouse, I will rebuke the devourer. Okay, so that your crops, your vine won't cast forth her fruit because tithing was dealing with your crops and your herds. Read it again. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bring forth year by year. Come on. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Which was Jerusalem. The is Jerusalem, excuse me. Go ahead. The tithe of the corn. The tithe of the corn. 10% of, of the corn. Of thy wine. Of your wine. 10% of your wine. Of thine oil. And of 10% of your oil. And the firstling of thy herds and of thy flocks. And the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks. Come on. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. That you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. Come on, watch this. And if the way be too long for thee. Now, if you're in Saudi Arabia and you got to get to Jerusalem, you got herds, you got uh, uh, seedlings and all of that, but the way is too far for you. Read that part again. And if the way be too long for thee, 
so that thou art not able to carry it. You can't carry all those seeds, all the 10% of your crops, 10% of your wine, 10% of your crops. The way's too long for you. What shall you do? Or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. Which is Jerusalem. Come when on. When the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money. Okay. I got all this. I got 10% of corn. I got 10% of wine. I got my firstlings of my herds. It says I change that into what? Because the far is too far for me to travel with all that. Then shalt thou turn it into money. Turn this into money. Sell all this and get the money. Come on. And bind up the money in thine hand. Bind it up in your hand. And shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Now I'm going to Jerusalem with the money. Go ahead. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Now I get to Jerusalem. I got to bestow whatsoever my soul lusteth after. Meaning I have to buy now seeds again. I got to get uh, uh, corn and wine and uh flocks of animals. I got to get rid of the money now. I got to buy the stuff that I got rid of originally. Buy the stuff back. Come on. For oxen. For oxen. Or for sheep. Or for sheep. Or for wine. Or for wine. Or for strong drink. Or for strong drink. Or whatsoever thy soul desires. Or whatsoever my soul desires. Come on. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. And you shall eat there in Jerusalem at the temple before the Lord your God. And thou shalt rejoice thou in thine household. Now why would I rejoice me and my household? Come on. And the Levite that is within thy gate. This is the point. And the Levite that was that is within thy gates. Thou shalt not forsake him. Don't forsake him. Why? What was the 10% for? The Levites. The Levites. The Levitical priests. Come on. For he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. Because the Levite has no part or inheritance. What does that mean? The Levites did not get an inheritance of land. When you read the distribution of land, when the 12 tribes of Israel came to Israel... The Levites were scattered throughout all the 12 tribes. And it was the tribe's part. Our job was to take care of the priest of God. Go to the storehouse and bring meat. Meaning bring crops. Bring animals so that the Levites could be taken care of. Come on. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithes of thine increase the same year. And shall lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he had no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow which are within thy gates shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. So you see that? So not only the priests, who, who was taken care of also? The strangers that sojourned amongst us and the orphans, all of them were taken care of with what? The tithe money. The tithe Okay, not tied money. Meaning with that money that you had and you bought all the stuff back, they was taken care of with your crops, with the animals. Understand that. That's why in the New Testament, why Paul never said, bring me your tithes. Because the tithe was always a law for the priests, for the Levites. Understand that. Okay, now from there, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 4. What happened? Now remember what the tithe was for, the priest number one. Then for the strangers, the orphans, okay? Watch this. Acts chapter 4, verse 34 and 35. Neither were there any among them that lacked. Now this is the apostles and the disciples that followed Christ. You say you follow Christ? Watch this. Read it again. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them. Any of the believers that had lands... In houses who had extra, they sold them, come on, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. Now they got the money of the lands and the houses that they sold, because they had extra, they had abundance. They laid the money down at the apostles' feet. Let's see if the apostles bought bent leaves. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And distribution! was made to every man according as he had need. According as he had need. Meaning what? If he had a family of 10 kids and I have a family of 4 kids, who has the greater need? He would. So more was given to him to take care of his family. Let's read that again. 35. And lay them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Does your pastor operate like that? Does your pastor in the pulpit operate like that? Because I see a lot of poor in Christianity. I see poor people everywhere, but I've never seen a poor pastor. 
Oh, no, 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 no. I've seen rich pastors. I've seen them with houses and lands and all that. Like we live to take care of your nasty evil behind. From there, Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, verse 1. I am sought of them that ask not for me. God says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. Meaning that he's prophesying about Israelites scattered and these other lands that don't really know about the Lord. They will come to it. Their spirit would move them to seek the one true God like you're seeing today. Come on. I am fond of them that sought me not. I am fond of them that sought me not. Go ahead. I said, behold me. Behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Who is this nation that was not called by his name? The name is Israel. Who was not called by that? The scattered Israelites that were brought to America and all the scattered lands. We're no longer called Israel. We're called what? American black. We're called West Indian black, Haitian, Puerto Rican, Mexican, okay? Uh, 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 Panamanian, Nicaraguan. That's what we're called. Read that part again. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Come on. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. So who is this rebellious people? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. You right there at home. Come on. Which walketh in a way that was not good. Blacks and Latinos, you walk in a way that is not good. Fuck, keep following that Negro in the pulpit. Go ahead. After their own thoughts. They walk after their own thoughts. You at home, you walk after your own thoughts. Come on. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. You blacks and Latinos, we as a people provoke the Lord to anger every day at his face. Because when the Lord is brought out, we go, oh no, I ain't doing that. And why don't we do it? Because my pastor, my pastor told me I don't got to do that. Watch. That sacrifices in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. What is the gardens that is speaking of? Now you got to know history now. You got to know history. Before there was such a thing as buildings called churches, back in ancient times, they were called gardens. You had people would cut down a tree and a stump in the middle of the garden, they would shape it into a god, a Roman or Greek or, 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 or some kind of Babylonian or Egyptian god was shaped out of that tree stump. And the garden was all around that tree stump. And people would come and offer sacrifices. Okay? Understand that. Read that part again. A, pe a people that provoked me to anger continually to my face, mm -hmm. that sacrifices in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Right. But today, what is this called? You call them churches. Come on. Which remain among the graves. Which remain among the graves. What does that part mean? Which our people, which sacrifice in these gardens, remain amongst the grave. What's in graveyards? The dead. The dead. Hold that. Give me Proverbs 21 and 16. Let's explain why is it saying that the Israelites that sacrifice in gardens remain among the graves. Okay? Because you're in your churches sacrificing to a false god, a white god, so you remain amongst the graves. Proverbs 21, 16. Proverbs 21, 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Of the dead. Of the dead. Let's go back to Isaiah 65. Where you at? Isaiah verse? 65, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, mm -hmm. which eat swine's flesh. Which eat what? Which eat swine's flesh. Which eat pork, 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 chitlins, pig intestines, hog jowls. Which eat what? Which eat swine's flesh. Which eat swine's flesh. So why do you eat swine's flesh? Oh, I know. Your pastor said, what God has cleansed, we can eat. And you simple Negroes and Latinos. What verse is that? Four. Go ahead. And broth of abominable things. And broth of abominable things. In the South, they have broths of abominable things like what? Possum stew, rabbit stew, turtle stew. Read that part again. And broth of abominable things mm -hmm. is in their vessels. What verse is that? Four. Now, go ahead. Which say, stand by thyself. Now these people in the churches, listen good. God is prophesying that those, our people, because they are people, 
stay in these lousy churches, listening to that lousy pastor, eating swine's flesh, worshiping the white image of Jesus. What do they say? Which say, stand by thyself. They say, no, brother, because you, you try to bring the truth to them. We try to bring the truth to you, and you go, no, 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 no. They go, no, stand by yourself, brother. Come not near to me. You don't got to come near me with that Bible, brother. For I am holier than thou. For I am what? I am holier than thou. I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose. What does it mean when God says these are a smoke in my nose? It means God, it makes God angry. He can't stand you that say you so holy. Now, let's give an example of that. You ever notice in the church you always got that elder in the church, that mother of the church who says, I'm, I'm Holy Ghost filled, I'm washed in the blood of the land, I'm sanctified by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> That's the Negro that says I'm holier than thou. I know the Bible. You don't, don't, don't come near me with that Israel stuff. I know it all. Brother, sister, please. Okay. Won't we'll keep commandment one. Right. Won't we'll keep commandment <laughs> one. Okay. From there, watch this. Was that it? Did you finish that? No. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. That's it. Honey. Now let's go to Isaiah 29. Where did your pastor, your deacons and deaconesses, your mothers in the church, where did they learn that Jesus is white? Where did they learn it's okay to eat pork? Where did they learn a Christmas? Where did they learn Mother's Day and Woman's Day and Men's Day? Huh? Isaiah 29, verse 13. Watch this. Isaiah 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near to me with their mouth. How do you draw near the Lord with your mouth? You go, I love the Lord. Oh, yes, I love the Lord, brother. I love him. Go ahead. And with their lips do honor me. Praise Jesus. But have removed their heart far from me. But you've removed your mind far from God, meaning you won't do commandment one. Anytime the Bible brings out a law, you go, no, I ain't doing that. Because pastor said, come on. And they're fair toward me. And you're fair towards God, meaning all your understanding about God, all your understanding about the Bible is taught by the precept of men. It's taught by the white man. That's what it's saying. That's the prophecy. Because who taught you Christmas? Who taught you white man, Jesus? Your slave master, the white man. Oh, no, that's too harsh. You shouldn't say that. Brother, sister, remember, slavery. Let's think back. Were we allowed to read in slavery? No. Were we allowed to write? If we couldn't read, we couldn't write. So who taught us? White man, Jesus. Who taught us it's okay to eat pork? Who taught us Christmas? Our slave masters. Okay? From there, what you got going to now? First John... First John 2 and 4. 2 and 4. Watch this, because you know what they do? They all, here come the Negro in the church. Brother, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? I have a personal relationship. See, you got to say the sinner's prayer. Oh, Jesus, hear my prayer. I got a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, you can't get into heaven. Watch this. You're calling to read it. First John 2 verse 4. He that saith, I know him. He that saith, I know him, meaning he that saith that they got a personal relationship with Jesus. And keepeth not his commandments. And you don't keep commandment one. Is a liar. Is what? Is a liar. You a liar. You and your lousy preacher in the pulpit is a liar. And that's not what I said. Don't get mad at that's what we just read it again. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Is a liar. Watch this. And the truth is not in him. And your pastor has no truth, brothers and sisters. Go to John 14, 15. Watch this. Okay. Now, we could have kept reading down. You could read, read the rest on your own. But I'm going I'm to go straight to Christ and show you what he said. In John chapter 14 and verse 15. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. What? If you love me, keep my commandments. So your pastor, because he refuses to keep the commandments, what does that prove? He hates the Lord. He's putting on a show for you unlearned blacks and Latinos. From there, watch this. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. Because they got another one coming. They got another doctrine on which your world council of churches. Oh, you thought we didn't know about the world council of churches. I'm going to tell you about the world council of churches. You can look it up. Google World Council of Churches. The World Council of Churches is made up of the largest congregations. To be a member of the World Council of Churches, you must have an active membership of no less than 10,000 members. 
Then and only then are you allowed in their special meetings. In their special meetings, they come up with new understandings of the Bible. They come up with new doctrines, the flavor of the year. Like, what's this flavor of the year? Prosperity. The prosperity doctrine. You ever hear that? Another one. God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. Let's address those two issues. For your prosperity doctrine, God is bringing about an economic famine here in America. You see jobs closing down. Business is falling. You out of work. You on welfare. You crying for handouts. Okay? But what happened to the prosperity doctrine? But that lousy pastor in the pulpit is still saying, bring me 10% of your tithes. That's what he's doing. Then, for the next group, they try to get all the homosexuals and everybody, and they say, God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. All you homos, come on, come on, you homo, homo, come on, come on, homo. Watch what, this is why they took out the Apocrypha out of the Bible. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 9. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike, hateful unto God. Read it again. For the ungodly and his ungodliness. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike. Are both alike. Hateful unto God. Hateful unto God. The ungodly and his ungodliness is both alike. Hateful unto God. Understand that. So that's a lie when they say God hates the sinner. No, God hates the sin but loves the sinner. Right. That's a lie. It says the ungodly and his ungodliness is both alike hateful unto God. Now from there, Ecclesiasticus chapter 12 in the Apocrypha. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, we want verse 6. Let's see if there's another precept that says the same thing, okay? Ecclesiasticus chapter 12 and verse 6. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, verse 6. For the Most High hateth sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. Read it again. For the Most High hateth sinners. The Most High hateth sinners. God hates the sinner. So your pastor in a pulpit is a liar again who says God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Read it again. For the most high hateth sinners. The most high hateth sinners. And will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. Now watch this. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah 28 because they learn all the little clever slogans in the world council of churches. Now watch this. And you know why? You know how you know? When America, when they refused, they delayed. Let me use that term. They delayed to help our people in New Orleans. And the people was about to riot because everybody was mad. They said, you could not find New Orleans. And the reporters even said, we got to New Orleans. How come the government, it took them weeks to find it, weeks to get over here? huh? When they saw that the people was erupting and violence it was turning into, who they hire? Anybody remember? Who did the president go get? Who was the president at the time? Bush. Bush. Who did Bush get? He found two of the most popular coons he could find. <laughs> Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jakes. Flew him in on his own, what's the name of his jet? Um, Air Force One. Air Force One. Now I need you boys to go out there and talk to them, Nick. I mean, to your people. <laughs> Calm them down. Calm them down. Calm them down. <laughs> Watch this. Call it and read it. Isaiah 28, verse 15. Listen good. Because he has said, we have made a covenant with death. The false pastor has said, we have what? Made a covenant with death. Made a covenant with death. Made a covenant and agreement with white America. Made an agreement with Babylon the Great. And with hell, are we at agreement? And with hell, are we at agreement? What is hell? Hold that. Hold that. Isaiah 5, 13. I need clues. Right now, you don't understand hell. You're going, under the earth, the devil is sticking you with a fork? That's hell? No, that's not hell. Isaiah, is it 513? Isaiah 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself. Ooh, let's read that verse again. Call it again and read it. Isaiah 513. It's going to explain hell. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Therefore, my people, God's people have gone into captivity. Captivity means slavery. That's right, where you at. 
We are all in slavery. This is all captivity. America and the islands of America are the lands of our captivity. Read it again. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Why? Because they have no knowledge. We as a people have no knowledge. At the beginning of the lesson, what is the knowledge we're supposed to learn? The knowledge of God's laws, according to Ma was it Malachi 2 and 7 That's right. and Jeremiah 3, 15. We were supposed to learn the commandments of the one true God, but we refused, we refused and rebelled, and we went into captivity. Come on. Because they have no knowledge. Because we have no knowledge of God's laws. And their honorable men are famished. Our honorable men, meaning our princes, our leaders, are famished. To be famished means you're at a loss. You're at a lack of what? A lack of understanding. A lack of the truth. Come on. And their multitude dried up with thirst. And the multitudes of the people that follow these, uh, these so-called honorable black leaders are dried up with thirst. We're dried up with thirst because we don't know the truth. Come on. Therefore... Hell hath enlarged herself. So what is hell? Captivity. Read the top again. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. No, read the top of the verse. Therefore my people are gone into captivity. Now jump down to hell. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. So read the top again. Therefore my people are gone into captivity. Jump down. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. So what is hell? Captivity. Slavery. Understand that. Was that the whole verse? Nope. Go ahead. And open her mouth without measure. And hell has opened her mouth without measure. Because now we all having children. And our children are in hell, in this captivity. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. So the beginning, remember it said, now go back to where you was at. Isaiah 28 verse 50. Now this is why we went to the scripture explaining hell. Read it, call it, or get it. Isaiah 28, verse 15. Watch this. Because he has said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell. Because he has said, we have made an agreement. That's what covenant means. An agreement with death and hell. What is the death and hell the leaders of our people are in agreement with? Captivity. Slavery. Come on. Are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through... It shall not come unto us. These lying pastors that are in agreement with us being in captivity, because why? Why are they in agreement with it? Because all these little lousy pastors of yours are getting paid top dollar, okay? That's what they're in agreement with it, okay? It says, when the scourge, which is judgment, shall come, these pastors say, it's not going to come near us. Come on. It shall not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge. Why? For we have made lies our refuge. They say ain't nothing going to happen to us because we have made lies our refuge, our protection. We have taught everything the white man has taught us. So we good, brothers. Us lying pastors, that's what you still pastors say, you're all good. That's why there's a whole, give me a, give me a word, there's a whole, a, a lot of them. There's a, a league of these pastors right. that go to these theology schools. So they say nothing's going to happen to us as long as we stick to the white man's doctrines. Whatever come our way, the white man going to protect us. Right. Was that the whole verse? It shall not come unto us. Judgment shall not come not unto us. For we have made lives our refuge. Because we have made lives our refuge. And on the falsehood have we hid ourselves. And we hid ourselves in the falsehood. You know why? You know why? Because going to these theology schools, there's a curriculum your pastor had to follow. He had to accept white man Jesus to become a pastor he cannot be in theology school and teach something different he get cast out no degree Negro you gotta accept white man Jesus you gotta accept Christmas Easter all the lies your pastor had to accept it from there let's go to Matthew 23 Matthew 23 we want verse 13 14 then we're gonna jump to 18 because Christ had a problem with the religious leaders of Israel, which are your pastors today. The scribes and Pharisees that taught traditions of men, your pastors are in the same boat. They, they don't teach the laws of God, they teach traditions of men. Matthew 23, we want verse 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. What? Hypocrites. Mm hmm. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against you men. You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. What does that part mean? 
It says, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against yourselves, and those that would enter, you close the door to them. What does all that mean? Meaning you have brothers and sisters. Hear this truth. We're the Israelites. Christ looks like us. The kingdom is for us. The white man is the people of Esau. What? Then you go to your pastor, and your pastor goes, oh, no. God loves everybody. God loves us all. Huh? I had a dream. I had a dream. And manipulates the mind of the brother or sister, shutting them from the kingdom of heaven, pulling them back into their refuge of lies. What verse you at? 14. Now. Come on. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses. For you devour widows' houses. And for a pretense, make long prayer. And for a show, that's what a pretense is. For a show, you, they make what? Long prayer. They make long prayers. I'm going to give the prayer. Oh, Lord, opens out my lips. And they say this prayer, 20 minutes go by, 40 minutes go by, and our, the Negro's still praying. They devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, they give long prayers. What does it mean they devour widows' houses? The, the man of the house dies. They say, well, Sister Betty, you want that blessing? I know your husband left you an awful lot of money. It would be doing God a service if you give us at least, I know I said 10%, but give us at least 20, maybe 30%. Of what your husband left you. That's how they devour widows' houses. Okay? They take what's left for them. Okay? Now verse 18, please. Um, we didn't finish it. Okay, go ahead. And for a pretense, make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Therefore, you pastors, you scribes and Pharisees, you shall what? Receive the greater damnation. You shall receive the greater damnation. That was it? Yeah, that's it. Jump down to 18. Verse 18. And whosoever shall swear by the altar... You in 18, right? Yeah. Okay. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. What was Christ calling them? You fools and blind. Who was he talking to? The leaders of Israel, the scribes, the Pharisees. What are they called today? Pastors? Priests and reverends. That's what these scribes and Pharisees are called today. But Christ called them fools and blind. Understand that. Fools and blind. From there. Call and read. Isaiah 56, verse 11. Watch this. Yea, they are greedy dogs. They are greedy dogs. Why does the Bible prophesy about the leaders of Israel being greedy dogs? Because they're all about money. Go ahead. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. They can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Understand what? The Bible. They can never understand the Bible. Go ahead. They all look to their own way. They all look to their own ways. What does that mean? They look to their own house, their own car, their own belly, their own mind, their own feelings. Everyone for his gain. Everyone for what? Everyone for his gain. That's what your pastor is about. What? Did you finish the verse? From his quarter. Now, from there. Watch this. Let's go to Mark chapter 9. Let's talk about the Holy Ghost just for a second. Mark chapter 9, verse 20. Because your pastor, in the churches, you know what they say? You'll have, they say, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. And there'll be somebody coming up the aisle. And they'll stop foaming at the mouth. <laughs> then they'll fall on the ground. And they got the Holy Ghost. She got the Holy Ghost. That's what happens. Let's read about that in the Bible. Mark chapter 9. Let's start at verse 20. Mark chapter 9 verse 20 mm -hmm. and they brought him unto and they brought him unto him and when he saw him straightway the spirit tear him straightway the, when Christ saw this boy straightway the spirit that was in the boy tore him and he fell on the ground he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming and wallowed foaming at the mouth mm, let's see if this is the Holy Ghost maybe it sounds like the Holy Ghost and he right. asked his father how long is it ago since this came unto him and Christ asked his father how long has the boy been like this and he said, of a child. He said, this boy, my boy been like this since he was a baby, since a child. And oft times it has cast him into fire. And oft times this spirit has cast my boy into the fire. And into waters. And into waters. To destroy him. To what? To destroy him. Mm -hmm. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us Watch and help this. us. Let's see if Christ said, no, this is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, 
If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Come on. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. What? Now is Christ going to say, don't worry. He got the Holy Spirit. He got the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. He, wait, 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 wait. He what? He rebuked the foul spirit. It, it, it didn't say he had the Holy Spirit? He rebuked the foul spirit. Christ rebuked the foul spirit. Come on. Saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee. Come out of him and enter no more into him. So what is your church's foul spirits? Foul spirits. I remember growing up, me and my little brother used to wait. Let's see who's going to get the Holy Spirit. Uh oh, there goes Sister Betty. And Sister Betty on the ground. Sister Betty folding. She's shaking. That's a foul spirit. The Bible says that's a foul spirit. Let's talk about the Holy Ghost for a second. Give me Acts. Acts 7 verse 51 and you don't What is the Holy Ghost? What is the first manifestation of the Holy Ghost? Watch this. Acts 7 verse 51. Let's understand it. Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Mm. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in the hearts and ears. Mm. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. You do always. Stephan is talking to the scribes and Pharisees. He says you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Come on. As your fathers did, so do ye. As your fathers did, so do you. Now let's see. What, what is this Holy Ghost that our fathers always rejected? Verse 53 now. Verse 53. Watch this. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels. And have not kept it. And have what? And have not kept it. Back up to 51 again. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in the heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. 53 now. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels. Your forefathers received the law by the hand of angels. And what? And have not kept it. And have not kept it. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. That's what you brothers and sisters need to understand. The Holy Ghost begins by you keeping the laws of God. I'm going to prove that for some more. Give me John 4. Let's go back to John 14, 15. Okay? John chapter 14, verse 15. We're going to read verse 15 and 16 together. Let's see how you get the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 15. Watch this. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments, and what? And I will pray the Father, and ye shall receive another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Do you hear that? He said, if you keep, if you love me, keep the commandments, and I will pray the Father, and you shall receive another comforter, and he shall abide with you forever. What is this comforter? The Spirit of Truth. Okay? That's what he's going to explain as we read down. Watch this. Let's go from there. Let's talk about tongues briefly and quickly. Acts 2, 8 through 11. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? The apostles started speaking in tongues and all the other Jews that came from different lands, they heard them preaching the gospel in their own tongues wherein they were born. Come on. Parthians and Medes. Parthians and Medes, that's from the Persian captivity, Persian Medes. Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia. The Me Elamites is East Indians from Mesopotamia, and, and, or Babylonians. And in Judea. Judea. Cappadocia. Cappadocia, that's and, Asia Minor. And Pontus. Pontus, Asia Minor. And Asia. Come on. Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in parts of Libya. Egypt which is Northeast Africa, and parts of Libya, which is North Africa. About Cyrene. Of Cyrene, that's still North Africa. And strangers of Rome. Which they spoke Latin there. Go ahead. Jews. Jews. And proselytes. Proselytes meaning those Jews that converted back to the law of Moses. Cretes. Cretes. And Arabians. And Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue. We do hear them speak what? In our tongue. No. Wap, baba, loo, ba, pa, wap, bam, boom. In our tongue. In our tongue. You hear that? So guess what? Your pastor is a liar. Understand that. Was that it? The wonderful works of God. Now from there. Let's go from there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. Why was it necessary for the apostles to speak through inspiration, power of the Holy Ghost in different tongues for these Israelites? Here's the prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14, 21. 1 Corinthians 14, 21. Here it is. 
In the law it is written. In the law it is written, meaning in the book of Isaiah, it is written. With men of other tongues. With men of other tongues. And other lips. And other lips. Will I speak unto this people? Will I speak unto this people? Why? What was the prophecy? That the Israelites would go into slavery and be scattered in different nations. And in those different nations, you would learn different languages. For example, when we got off the slave ships, were some of our brothers and sisters taken down to Brazil? What language do our people speak in Brazil? Portuguese! Huh? Our brothers and sisters that were scattered in Haiti, what language do they speak? Creole! Okay, for you unlearned black men and black women. A lot of you is just simple. Leave that unlearned pastor alone. Read it again. Verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. Mm -hmm. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. And yet for all that will they not hear me. Okay, because what happened when you read in Acts? Some believed and some did not. Okay, from there. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Having a form of godliness. This is what we want. Read again. Having a form of godliness. Your pastor in your church. He has a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. But he denies the power thereof. What is the power? The law. When Israel kept the law, the spirit of God came upon us. And no nation could stand before us. When Christ kept the law, he had spiritual power. When Moses kept the law, he had spiritual power. Read it again. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So how does your pastor have a form of godliness? He got the Bible in his hand. He may quote a few scriptures real well, but that's as far as it goes. Come on. From such turn away. God says from what? From such turn away. Get away from that pastor that won't return and repent as an Israelite. That won't keep the commandments. The Bible says from such turn away. Come on. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. This type of guy creeps into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin. He's the type of brother, he's the type of pastor that creeps into houses and does what? And lead captive silly women laden with sin. He leads captive silly women laden with iniquity. He's always in her ear. He got his arm on her. He's giving her a special counseling. He wants to put his spirit in her if you know what I'm saying. What, what verse you read down? And lead captive silly women laden with sin, led away with diverse lust. Lay, lay, with, with, with diverse lust. He, the pastor, looks for these women. Silly women, laden with iniquity, confounded with diverse lust. He looks for women like that in the church. Then he's going to try to give her the Holy Spirit. He's all in her ear. He's having special meetings. Like in Florida, he had a certain pastor named, I'll just call him Zach, who had a visit 1.30 in the morning with a woman at a certain hotel, okay? Pastor Zach in Florida, we know who you are, but the Most High is gonna reveal you. Then you got the next pastor, talk about he trying to make a man out of young boys. I'm gonna I'm be your spiritual daddy, call me daddy. The job of the preacher is to bring fresh sperm. <laughs> Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know what that means? These pastors, they spend all that money in theology school. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That you're the Israelites, that you must keep God's commandments. Was that nine? That's it. Now, mm -hmm. from... Mm -hmm. You want me to read down to nine? Yes, down to nine. Go ahead. Now, as James and John Brees withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Because your pastor is just like Janice and John Brees that resisted Moses. They always resisted the truth. We come out and teach you the truth. You're the Israelites. You went into slavery because you broke the commandments of the Most High God. But Christ died for you. And he's coming to return and deliver you from the United States of America. Babylon the Great. And your pastor. Your pastor goes, oh, no. <laughs> That's not it. He always resists the truth. Come on. Now, as Janis and Jamres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt mind. Men of what? Of corrupt mind. Mm -hmm. Reprobate concerning the faith. Concern, reprobate concerning the faith. But I know, was that it? But they shall proceed no further. But what? But they shall proceed no further. That's why scandals are popping out after your pastors. You can only hide your sin but for so long. Eventually, it's going, the most high God's going to reveal you in your scandals. 
You, go ahead. Was that it? For their folly shall be manifest unto all men. For their folly shall be made manifest unto all men. Like you're seeing on the news. Was that it? As there's also what? As Janice and Jambres also was. But I know what you're saying. Here they go. <laughs> but my pastor... He's not like that. You know why my pastor's not like that? He ain't leading silly women laden with iniquity because my pastor is a she. I got a female pastor, and us women, <laughs> we gonna see what God says about your female pastors. First Timothy 2, verse 11. For your women pastors. Let the woman learn in silence. What? Let the woman learn in silence mm -hmm. with all subjection. With what? With all subjection. Meaning for you women, you want salvation? God says you got to learn this Bible in silence. Stop always having something to say. Shut the hell up. That's what the Bible is saying. Because when we read the law, the first thing a woman does, well, that's not what the white man taught us. And I'm throwing that in. That's not what they literally say. But spiritually, that's what they say. Because they won't say, that's not what the white man taught us. They'll say, does color really matter? Does it really matter what we wear? In, in translation, that's not what the white man taught us, brother. That's what they say. Read it again. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Mm -hmm. But I suffer not a woman to teach. For what? But I suffer not a woman to teach. God! Says through Paul, I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Nor to usurp authority over the man. But what? But to be in silence. But to be in silence. To shut up. That's what God says. Go ahead. Well, All the way down to 12. That's it. Uncle. Okay, 1 Corinthians now. Go to 1 Corinthians 14. Because then he tells you why. For Adam was first formed, and then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in a transgression. transgression. But she always got something to say. That ain't what the white man taught us. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35. Let your woman keep silence in the church. Oh, he said it again. Read it again. Let your woman keep silence in the church. So sister, shut up is the message God has for you. You talk about you want salvation, it's time for you to be quiet. Listen to the man that God has ordained, okay? Be silent and follow. Oh, they, they male chauvinists. See, I'm going to translate they male chauvinists. When they say they male chauvinists, they're saying, the white man says we got women's rights. That's right. We can be equal to you brothers. That's what you sisters are saying. Read it again. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, mm -hmm. for it is not permitted unto them to speak. It's not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience. Wait, they are what? They are commanded to be under obedience. They are commanded to be under obedience. As also saith the law. As also saith As what? As also saith the law. The law of God is for you to be silent and obedient. That's what the law says for the woman. So sister, you got a problem now. It's not really a problem because if you repent of your sin, that's no problem for you. But if you got the devil on you right now, you're probably running your mouth right now. You might have just cut the TV. Oh, oh, we got cut off now. <laughs> they mad because though their God, the white man, says otherwise. What verse you read down to? 35 now. Go ahead. And if they will learn anything. If the woman will learn anything. Let them ask their husbands at home. Let them ask their husbands at home. Why is that? Because that goes back to Genesis 3. When God told Eve, your husband shall rule over you. And you black women, because you're Eve. Okay, if you want salvation, you're going to do what this Bible says. So I'm not worried about you sisters that really love this truth. You're going to be okay. You're going to be delivered and saved. But for you big mouth black and Latin women, it's going to be death do you part. You're going to get put to death. Where you finish that? 35. Go ahead. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. You hear that? You hear that? Now, I know what they're thinking. Titus 2. Give me that. Titus 2 real quick. Get it? Come, come, come with it quick. Where it says about women teaching. I'm going to show you the understanding here. Titus chapter 2. Let your aged women. Titus 2. It might be around verse 3 or 4. It's right around here somewhere. Titus 2 verse 3. Right. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Come on. Not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. Go ahead. That they may teach the young woman. That they may teach the young woman. To be sober. To be sober. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Believe it or not, you must be taught how to love a man. Go ahead. 
to love their husbands, to love their children. Sister, you must be taught how to love your children. To be discreet. Why do you got to be taught that? Because everything you've learned, black woman, Latin woman has been from your slave master. Rise up against your black man. Rise up against your Latin man. And make your children follow you and run their mouth behind you. Have them watch BET. Okay? That's what you do. So you've got to be taught how to teach them because you've not been taught properly. So now when it says that you teach the young women, what is that really talking about? In your example, in your conversation. It ain't talking about women lead women like you got a certain one in the Bible. You sisters, you got to get a $500 pen if you want to be with me. Ah, shut the hell up. You women are out of order. I'm going to tell you straight. But if you want salvation, okay, you're going to follow exactly the way we're guiding you in the Bible, okay? And you ain't going to have nothing else to say about it. Lamentations 4 and 7. Let's use this as a closeout. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 7. After Jeremiah, I believe it is. Okay. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. I'm sorry, 17. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, as for us, blacks and Latinos, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Our eyes have failed for our vain help. Who do we think will help us? And our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. Who's the nation blacks and Latinos are crying for help from? The white man. The United States of America, white man. Like in New Orleans, they were crying to America for help on their rooftop. On their rooftop. <laughs> they were crying for the one true God. Okay? Right. So now, you at home, you women, back on you. You crying to the white man. See, the white man, these guys are false teachers. That's they pointing at us now. False teachers! Oh, oh, you hypocrite! Listen, we're the true prophets and servants of the Lord. We're going to tell you the truth whether it hurts your feelings or not. We're not here for your emotions. We're not here to make you feel good and hold you in hope. No, we're here to tell you the truth. Christ said in Matthew 11, is it Matthew 11 and 2 or 6? Blessed is he who is not offended in me. Is that Matthew 11 and 6? Somewhere that says that. Matthew chapter 11 verse 6. Get that? 11 verse 6. Is that it? And blessed is he. Whosoever shall not be offended in me. So you sisters that are sincere, I'm not worried about you being offended because you're going to hear this truth and go, that's what the Bible said, we're going to follow it. But you hard-head Negro, you effeminate black men, you masculine women, the most I going to move you out the way. You can't be used, okay? It, you're going to die when the missiles come. You're going to die. I'm going to tell you straight. All right, brothers, sisters, for more information, visit our website www.israelunite.org or visit us on YouTube www.youtube.com slash Nathaniel7 okay visit us and brothers and sisters we need your help bring your donations so that we can apply everything this Bible says the money you send is for this truth okay don't go in our pockets it goes for distribution for the poor amongst us and it goes to help bring this truth out to you okay so with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom. Shalom, Israel.